Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Anisha here, very happy that you're here. So in my last video, I kind of talked about my the layoff and just odd things happening all week. So I would say that in the last 10 days, there's been kind of like, it's not really a domino effect. I wanted to call it a domino effect, but it's more like just one thing after another that really hasn't slowed down. And that same sort of energy has been also taking manifest in global issues. So these esoteric channels and these psychic channels and astrological channels can be very comforting for me just because a lot of things that happen in our world defy any sort of logic. They don't really seem reasonable. They don't match the humanity that I would say most of us feel within ourselves and are able to see within other humans as we go throughout our day. It seems like really antithetical. So I go to these channels and I listen to what they say is happening. And for instance, in this one astrological channel I follow, she is a PhD in clinical psychology and she has like over 25 years and then she started incorporating Western astrology into her practice and now that's what she does full time. And her messages are always so, like they have a practical, like a practical way of infusing hope into whatever it is that's going on and whatever her reading is. And even with people who channel, people who are psychic meeting, mediums, you know, to me, it's like a part of me is always just like, uh, why, why do I listen to these things? And I know exactly why, because one, I'm definitely that kind of person because I feel like there's a lot of truth to these things because I've experienced them too, but also the messages that a lot of these people put out into the world are messages that are very healthy and they're not like uh, delusional. They're just very, you know, they, they kind of remove the cynicism out of life and put messages out there that I think are needed, quite frankly. So, I've been really leaning into that. And also I've been listening to a podcast, it's called Spooked, and it's by the people who do uh, Snap Judgment, which is been listening to for years. And uh, the reason why I like Spooked is because the stories are told, I think with the aid of like, you know, producers and stuff on the, on the podcast, but they are, they are told from the perspective of the person who experienced the paranormal activity. And it's, you know, the stories range from like, you know, family members, like coming across deceased family members in spirit form. And it's usually people who are not looking for paranormal or like, you know, they don't have some sort of delusional thing about it. It's just everyday people who happen to come across these things and usually try to ignore it or just don't really talk about it because they doubt whether or not they experienced it. So it just in some ways, it seems a little more like legitimate in a way. That might be the wrong word, but they're just really enjoyable and they're produced pretty well. So I've been listening to a lot of those and it, you know, as I think things get more real, like with all these things in my personal life that's been happening and just, you know, with work and then with like the global issues that are coming to a fore, you know, it's like after a certain point, it, 
it ceases to be helpful to look at the very practical reasons why these things are happening. You know, like companies lay off people all the time. It's a financial and a business decision, which I, you know, I intellectually we can all understand. Wars happen. People are atrocious to each other for a variety of reasons. It's not anything new. For me, it could be just a more like it could be an age thing. It could be just part of my life where I'm coming into knowing that though intellect is necessary, it's not the only thing that makes up our human experience. And I think especially for me, relying on creative expression and curiosity and intuition is a lot more becoming more and more important to infuse throughout my day to enhance my practical human experience on earth and not to detract from it, which is what I thought leaning into that part of myself would mean. It would make me less smart. It would make me more delusional. It would maybe increase, you know, my, my anxiety, things like that. And some days maybe that's true, but as a general, as a general additive, I think it can actually help me blossom, lack of a better word, more and more into who I am and embracing that part of me. Seven minutes in, which leads me to the card pull that I did today and I wanted to share with you guys. So tomorrow's my first day at the new store and I'm not nervous about it. I'm okay, I'm nervous about it, but that's just because of who I am. It has nothing to do with the actual store. It's it's going to be fine. You know, the people on the team are going to be fine. The, you know, I know a couple of folks there and it's, you know, it's just it's just something that's new. So it's that's really all there is to that part of it. Um, but it's like day 56 out of the 60. I have 60 days to find a new position or else I have to take uh, the severance. And so a job has to be available. They have to like me or I have to like look for something else. So there are a variety of options. One more thing I wanted to say is that like with the astrology, there's this eclipse, the lunar eclipse happening October 14th, right? And there can be upwards of like a week or like 10 days or even more before and after the day of the eclipse where people start experiencing a lot of these uh, eclipse type energies. And so a good friend of mine you know, I'd already been paying attention to all these like esoteric channels and things like that. And a friend of mine who's an astrologer, she said, you know, she's the one that really like brought it home. She was like, when I told her about the layoff and the job, she was like, this is exactly what October 14th is about. It's when the thinning of the veils happen and the cosmos or the those energies basically reach down and physically remove those material objects. Like they remove those obstacles. And that's what the, you know, the, ma the major meaning of the, of the eclipse is, is about. And I was like, you know, and then it's like kind of up to you to like figure out what's next. And okay, now the obstacle that you've been complaining about is no longer there. Now, what are you gonna do? So with all of that, you know, I'm trying not to like overthink it, but I'm also trying not to completely like ignore it and just kind of haphazardly, you know, with one eye open and one eye closed, be like, oh, okay, uh, let me just choose this or choose that and, you know, kind of numb out in that way. 
I'm really trying to be conscientious. And so a part of this is like leaning more into my intuition and into feeling supported by things like pulling tarot cards. So I did a read on what I need to know about the situation. So the situation being laid off, what should I do next? Where should I go? Do I leave and look for another company that can, where I can just do work from home? Do I want to do, do I want to like just take the severance and like try to do something on my own? You know, I don't think that's the best option, but um, do I want to stay here and possibly like move to another city in order to work at Global? You know, all of that stuff. So I, I really liked the, the cards that I got. It was a three card pull. So these are the three. This is the first position. And this is from Aren't they beautiful? This is from the gorgeous Taro Avatara. <laughs> what a baddie. She's a baddie deck. And then I pulled an oracle card from the Il Menegello insect. Gorgeousness. And I pulled a cicada. So... The Knight of Pentacles, the Two of Pentacles, and the Princess of Cups, which is the Page of Cups. So the Knight of Pentacles, that's like, what a gorgeous card to get in, in um, position number one. It's like, it's like such a statement, right? It's just like, no matter what, like stability reigns. And, you know, it's just kind of like being reliable for yourself, first and foremost, being hardworking, being practical, being down to earth. And one thing that she put in this gorgeous, this is like such a good book, by the way. And she explains how she got to the name. She explains all the different, like the different Frida, um, like all of her influences and like every single image has a page. It's, it's really good. And, um, so anyway, so she says that it's, you know, stability over passion, sustained efforts to tenacity and slow progress. Um, so stability over passion really resonated with me because earlier today, even before doing the card pull, when I'm thinking about all these things, you know, this whole thing about passion, um, you know, like I... I think I'm the type of person that really needs some sort of like enforced schedule upon me and work really does that for me. And I really like using that businessy part of my brain. I think it's exciting. I think it's fun. Um, is it my only passion? No, but I think it's, you know, an okay part of life that I might need to experience for a while. And, um, you know, with like the, the Knight of Pentacles is about like just really having to continue, like perseverance, like really having to continue doing the mundane tasks, um, like just going on with the day-to-day -day stuff without complaining, without holding grudges and being very methodical about things. So, I mean, there's so much happening in this image. To a certain extent, I think that this can be a little negative, like in the way that it's being depicted, but I think I see sort of a hierarchy where even Frida in the picture is just kind of like, okay, it's just, it's kind of time to get things done. Just for, just for the moment, you know, like, so in the second position is the two of pentacles, this gorgeous balance here. And uh, yeah, so it's for me all about balance, good, another, you know, in the second position when it comes to the situation, another down to earth pentacle card where there's a lot of competing things happening right now as to how I can practically move on to different, or what are my, sorry, how I can 
choose what I want to do and do so in a practical way and be very methodical about it. Um, knowing that I have like several different commitments and um, needing to manage the energy and resources for those commitments and knowing that it's going to be tough, but that the way to get through it is to achieve some sort of balance and knowing that balance doesn't mean perfection. It means that this week, you know, I might have to spend a little more time on the job search and then I might like neglect, um, you know, like household chores a few more days than I normally would. But that next week it would, I would do those household chores and then I won't have to do engage in the, um, work stuff as much, you know? So it's just all about the balance and knowing that because one priority might take over another, it doesn't mean that um, there's any, that, that, it, that it's wrong in any way. It's just having some sort of discernment around it um, and knowing that you can course correct and also relying on time management and being adaptable. And then the third card, which I thought is so cool, which is the Page of Cups. Look at that. It's got all that fish and the swan under her hair. So the Page of Cups, the message, the message. So just really listening for me, like engaging in my intuition, which in the last 10 days, I feel like I really, really have been. And I really needed, like today, I really felt like pulling a very intense deck. And this is a very intense deck and it's stunning. And uh, so just embracing my intuition and being able to think like, you know, I was thinking about like, I've always thought that I would never have an office job. And, you know, the more and more I'm like considering it as a possibility, I'm thinking like I can actually infuse a lot of my own personality, my own needs, like whether it's like bringing in my spiritual stuff or just like doing card pulls for myself or like there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with any of that. And it feels actually very supportive. Um, and just kind of infusing that throughout my day every day, you know, whereas for me, I never really thought, I felt like it detracted from like the practicality of life. And that's just not the case. And I know that's like a really slow realization for me, but you know, nonetheless, at least I'm getting there. Um, and this is also about how Like you're, you're seeing like the more honest that you are, the more you use your intuition, the more that you kind of um, like wear your heart in your sleeve, like almost towards yourself and how you, how you are in different situations, the more, the more like real that you are to yourself and the more that cool opportunities will come your way. And it's something that you can really force. It's something that's just like gonna be happening the more, the more you engage in this part of yourself. And then the Oracle card was the cicada. And the cicada is, it's a time of emergence, it's resurrection, and um, it's trusting your higher guidance and your inner wisdom, which, you know, these were the last two cards that I pulled. So the first two cards are very practical, you know, in terms of just balance and like the earth energies, which I definitely, definitely need. And these two were more about like just the essence of who I am. You know, this is, this is what allows me to do these things. Like this always needs to like undergird, you know, just how I am in the world as a physical being. <laughs> And, um, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely a time of kind of like reemergence and shedding old skin and, you know, it's going to be, it's very uncomfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable, but it's kind of happening fast and quick and I really have no other choice. And I, 
need to show up for myself and um, in a way that I guess I've never really have in a while, um, which is like taking on the more like, like, you know, success, the traditional ideas of success, you know, that I want also for myself. And, you know, just that kind of coming to a head now and a lot sooner than expected for me. So anyways, um, I also, this is at the bottom of the deck, the Princess of Wands, very youthful and very like, you know, releasing of, um, like you're not jaded yet, you know, so good. So anyways, uh, thank you all for listening and um, I hope all of you are having a good week and, you know, if it's really hard, you know, there is an eclipse happening, so. Just take it easy on yourself and just um, keep going and we'll talk soon. Bye.